All right. We are back. And uh, the Rams have finally dropped at least some semblance of a depth chart. We're going to get into it. I figured I would react. I've had people asking me, hey, when are you going to go live? Uh, you know the drill, guys. If I make a schedule and I go live during that schedule, I lose power. Something always comes up. So we're doing the no schedule thing unless during the season, obviously, it's pretty easy to figure out what my schedule will be. Uh, I will be streaming before Rams games and after Rams games. And, uh, you know, we'll be going live for all three primetime games each week. I do have an announcement to make. Actually, a few announcements here. One, if you haven't already, be sure to follow me on kick.com slash JK Bogan, as well as my buddy Gary Sheffield Jr. Uh, kick.com slash Gary Sheffield Jr. The reason being, we are giving away a free NFL jersey right before the NFL season. Uh, so if you want to enter to win that, be sure to do that. Drop a comment saying done and you're good to go. That's the first thing. The second thing is if you are trying to go to the preseason game this weekend, but you do not have tickets, uh, my friend Vince and I are giving away uh, tickets over on uh, Twitter. You just have to follow. Uh, you subscribe to YouTube if you're on YouTube right now. Follow my kick channel if you're on kick. And uh, go follow Vince A Y G underscore on Twitter. If you do that, you will be entered to win uh, that giveaway. Check that out on uh, Twitter. We're giving away four Rams preseason tickets for the game this weekend. So uh, hopefully you guys can do that. And then the last thing of announcements here before we dive into uh, you know the topic at hand is I have a change of plans here. Okay. I am still going to be doing a live stream on Bleach Report for all three preseason games. However, it will not be a watch party as I found out today. They want to go more towards the direction of doing a post game. Personally, this works out better. I get to get that exposure, get to go on Bleach Report and get to interact with, uh, you know, people on Bleach Report. But in addition to that, opportunities knocking, guys, that means we will have, because I was asked during the Hall of Fame game if I would do a watch party on the channels uh kick and youtube we will be doing that so all three preseason rams games you can check out those uh watch parties i will be doing them for all three as you know i'll be doing uh watch parties for all the primetime games this year and uh we're we're killing it guys we're, we're cooking with gas so uh now that i got all of those out of the way and obviously link is in the description for everything i just mentioned um, I think I'll probably upload those pages for the, uh, oh, damn, there we go. Monty, appreciate you. Salute my brother, Jake, and fellow Ram Manians. I'm loving the John Johnson, the third pickup. We need, we need that veteranship and toughness. I'm with you. I was very happy to report that yesterday. So uh, that that's the, thank you again for the five. I really appreciate that. Right out the gate. We start off with a super chat. So really appreciate you guys. So yeah, I wanted to get that out of the way. I wanted to get all the, um, you know, the announcements to make out of the way before I forgot. Um, also, uh, because Garrett just reminded me, you can join and, and all the links are in the description below. Any of my affiliate links, anything like that or channel, all in the, uh, you know, description on YouTube and on kick. If you're on kick over there, uh, it's on the bottom of my page. So you can find all the stuff there. But uh, yeah, if you want to join any of that, the link is in the description on YouTube. And, um, you know, we're going to be uh, Cam uh, Lynch and I are going to be ramping up our efforts on underdog fantasy. So if you guys want to start playing that with us, um, you know, we're going to be doing that as well. So we're going to be drafting some fantasy football teams, best ball. So if you guys are interested in that, uh, definitely be sure to check out our promo link. You get a hundred dollars, uh, you know, a hundred dollars towards, uh, you know, a hundred percent of your deposit. Um, so, so that's great. Um, hundred percent of a hundred dollars. Uh, but yeah, so anyway, bad with the announcements thing. That's just like, I don't like being a bulletin board, but that stuff had to get out there. Let's talk about this. Um, so the Rams announced their uh, first unofficial depth chart for 2023 uh, preseason. Uh, the depth chart is as followed. The quarterbacks, <clears throat> Matthew Stafford, and then second string is Stetson Bennett or Brett Rippon. And then third string is Dresser Win. So let's start off with that. What does that really mean? Um, Matthew Stafford's obviously the starter. Uh, he's not going anywhere, guys. So uh, 
Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Stetson Bennett is re- he's listed ahead of Brett Rippin. It says Step- Stetson Bennett on the same line or in all uppercase and then below him, Brett Rippin. That tells me Stetson's probably going to start off the game as the starter and Brett Rippin will start, um, you know, he'll take over as the, the quarterback the rest of the way. And maybe just maybe Dresser Win will get an opportunity uh, to get in in the fourth quarter. Running backs are as followed. Cam Akers as the starter. Uh, second string is Kyron Williams. Third string is Ronnie Rivers. Fourth is Royce Freeman, comma, Zach Evans. Um, so I will just lead off with this. This stuff matters and it doesn't matter. They have to release a depth chart, but at the same time, the depth chart isn't entirely what's going to end up being for the season. However, there's always some things that are thrown in there that you can react to. Um, Cam Akers is our starter. Uh, that's that's not you know up for debate. Thank you so much for subscribing. Appreciate you. I can't even read that. Again, the text is so small. I don't know why. Um, but thank you for subscribing. Um, yeah. So thanks again for the uh, subscribe. Let's see. That says Ruben, I believe. Yeah. I'm gonna make this full screen so I can see it. There we go. So hopefully I can see the next one. I appreciate you guys subscribing, by the way. Awesome. Be sure to hit the like button. We're trying to get to 100 every live stream. I can see that. Uh, L.A. Canuck. Appreciate you. Um, okay. So Cam Akers, number one. Number two is Kyron Williams. Number three is Ronnie Rivers. Royce Freeman, comma, Zach Evans is the fourth string. Uh, Bill, appreciate you subbing there. Um, so let's let's look. Okay, Kyron Williams, I've been saying, is the number two. He's getting opportunities uh, with the ones in camp. Cam Akers is obvious. Ronnie Rivers as the third guy. Thank you for the sub deuce. Uh, Ronnie Rivers as the third guy is a big deal. You know, I think uh, it shows that this guy is developing. He's somebody that he's not necessarily going to uh, be an easy out and who knows he might even make the roster Uh, appreciate you with the sub there Christopher Um, so Royce Freeman is battling it out against Zach Evans Evans right now would be the fifth running back Um, now again put stock and don't put stock into this right Uh, (laughs) thank you Robert appreciate that Um, so that's something to keep in mind there right so Akers, Kyron locked in. Ronnie is the third. I think there's a pretty good chance you're seeing Ronnie Rivers as starter. Thank you, Rick. Um, so there's a pretty good chance we're going to see uh, Ronnie as the starter, right? So that, that, that's that's what we're probably looking at. Stetson Bennett, Ronnie Rivers. All right, let's look at wide receivers. We got 2 2 Atwell. Uh, thank you, Beanie. Appreciate that. 2 um, 2 Atwell, Van Jefferson. And Cooper Cup. Cooper Cup obviously being number one, Jefferson number two, Atwell number three. Uh, those are your starters. Second string, thank you, David. We got uh, Ben Skoranek at number four, technically, but he's part of the second string. Then Demarcus Robinson, then Puka Nakua, right? Um, and then you see Austin Trammell in the third spot. So third string, Austin Trammell. You got uh, Lance McCutcheon, Tyler Johnson, and then in the fourth string, you got Xavier Smith, Braxton Burmeister, and Tyler Hudson. So what do I take away from this? Well, I can tell you right now, Cooper Cup, uh, Van Jefferson, Tutu Atwell are not going to be playing in preseason. I will be shocked if they're, if they're playing in preseason. We'll be absolutely shocked. Uh, so I wouldn't expect that. I think Ben Skoranek could. I know he didn't last year. was supposed to have a bigger role. This year, not have as big of a role. So I'm going to uh, end up, you know, starting preseason. I think you're probably looking at Ben Skoranek, uh, Demarcus Robinson, and Puka Nakua, and then Tyler Johnson, Lance McCutcheon, Austin Trammell, Xavier Smith, Braxton Burmeister, and Tyler Hudson kind of rotate in and out. Um, tight ends. We look at uh, Tyler Higby. Number one, obviously. Number two is Bryson Hopkins. Number three is Hunter Long, who is currently on the PUP list. Uh, Then you have number four, uh, the fourth stringers. It's Davis Allen, comma, Nikola Kalanick. Yeah, I hope I didn't, you know, got rid of it. I I probably butchered that name, but anyway. Then Christian Sims and Cameron McDonald, who they just signed. Um, So with that said, uh, you got Hunter Long, who's on the PUP right now. 
probably not going to play. Bryson Hopkins, does he start? I don't know. If he doesn't start and Higby doesn't start, then it would go to Davis Allen. And that would be some really nice reps right off the bat to get him starting his first ever NFL game. Not saying that's going to happen, but that's an interesting one nonetheless. Then you look at the offensive line here. Joe Noteboom is leading the pack. Uh, he's on top. He's on the first line for starters or Alaric Jackson. So that's a battle. That's what that signifies. There is a position battle happening, which we already knew. I think Alaric wins. I think Jordan Rodriguez said Alaric wins. I think most people expect Alaric to win, uh, but Joe Nopum is listed ahead of him there. At left guard, it's just Steve Avila. You love to see that. He's pretty much solidified his starting job as a second rounder, which obviously you love to see. Uh, center, Brian Allen or Coleman Shelton. So that lets us know that both of these guys being listed in the same you know column that this is a position battle uh, you know for the starter role we'll see what happens there no center is listed behind them but mike McAllister and sean mcginn are the second and third stringers on the left guard spot those guys can also play center uh ajr curry is the second stringer um you know after joe nopum and alec jackson the first string for left tackle and then you have right guard Tremaine Ankrum starting. Zachary Thomas moves over from tackle to guard. Uh, he is second string. And then Sean McGinn is listed again as a third string right guard. Then you have right tackle Rob Havenstein, Logan Bruss, and Warren McClendon. So that is your offensive line. My guess here, it's going to be a little tricky because they can't afford any injury at left tackle. So I think AJR Curry might start here. Maybe you see no boom to try to get him going. Maybe some, you know, a, uh, a series or two, Alec Jackson, maybe a series or two, but if not, AJR Curry is going to start the majority of this football game at left, at left tackle. It looks like Steve Avila will be in at left guard. He'll probably play a half and then come out. You'll have Mike McAllister, Sean McGinn uh, rotating in and out, but there's not a lot of depth here. Uh, in the interior to really not play Brian Allen or Coleman Shellen. So there's a good chance that one of those guys could end up starting this game. Tremaine Ankrum could start because he hasn't played in quite a while, but if he doesn't, then maybe Logan Bruss kicks in at right guard or he plays right tackle and you have Zachary Thomas playing right guard. So the offensive line could be a little bit of a struggle in preseason because, you know, you're trying to figure out, you know, a lot of, they had a lot of injuries last year, so they have to kind of juggle that. But they also have to figure out what makes sense to them at the end of the day. Does it make sense to, you know, hey, let's do this, let's do that? Or, you know, does it make sense to just roll with everybody? And in my opinion, I think it would make sense to get some of these guys some playing time. Um, it, it just in my opinion, I mean, I don't know what you guys think, but I, I think I understand they, they dealt with a lot of injuries last year, but it would be imperative in my opinion to you know have guys like no boom get at least a series right because you're probably not going to play them all three preseason games but you got to at least give a couple of those guys uh, some run there so that's what i will say there uh in regards to the offense things that stand out to me before we head over the defense kyron williams at number two which would, that was obvious but ronnie rivers i think at three we'll see if that actually translates um, Stetson Bennett or Brett Rippin. I don't know if that really stands out to me. That's kind of expected. Tutu Atwell is the number three. Puka Nakua right behind him. Um, Zachary Thomas not listed as a tackle, instead listed as a guard. So that's interesting there. Um, and then nobody behind Brian Allen or Coleman Shelton at center. It's almost like, does that mean they don't look at McAllister and McGinn as centers? I don't know. Um, and then lastly, I'll throw this out there, but you know, kind of the idea of Austin Trammell having his own third string here. He's not listed with a bunch of fourth guys. So he's battling, you know, Lance McCutcheon for that eighth receiver role. If there is one to be had, uh, we move over the defense here and the starting defensive end is Marquise Copeland or Ernest Brown. The fourth, this is intriguing here because for those of you that don't remember, Ernest Brown, the fourth was drafted by the Rams fifth round out of Northwestern. And this is a guy that I think a lot of people have just forgotten about, right? Um, he's stuck around the pre, you know, the practice squad. He's played in preseason. Really, he got in a little bit last year. Um, was a guy that they kind of looked at could play kind of similar to John Franklin Myers, where he might be a little too big to play outside linebacker, 
but a little too small to play on the the line so he's been somewhat of a tweener I think they kind of just figured like all right we're gonna play him on the the line and Aaron Dahl mentioned the other day in uh in pressers that this guy's getting a lot of reps so there's a really big chance here for Ernest Brown the fourth to get in and actually play this year which is extremely intriguing at least in my opinion um, so it's Marquise Copeland or Ernest Brown the fourth. Then you have second stringer at defensive end, Jonah Williams. And then you have third stringer, TJ Carter. Nose tackle is Bobby Brown the third or Kobe Turner. This is a little intriguing as well. I don't know if they're going to play Kobe Turner at nose tackle. This could be just they're throwing something out there. Um, but nonetheless, uh, it's a little interesting, right? Uh, then you have defensive tackle Aaron Donald, obviously, first string. Second string is Laurel Murchison. Third string is Deswan Johnson. And fourth string is UDFA Teron Vincent, who is related to Troy Vincent, uh, who is the, uh, I believe, the president or the vice president of the uh, Players Union, uh, the NFLPA. So, um, you yeah, know, Players Association, excuse me. So that is that in the interior I think if you're looking at this, obviously Aaron Donald does not sniff the field in preseason. So that would mean Laurel Murchison in all likelihood starts. Um, Copeland might start, but if not, I'd see Ernest Brown there and then Kobe Turner or Bobby Brown. I think really everyone should be getting some starting reps on the defensive line, except for Aaron Donald. Like keep him off the, like, I don't have to tell you guys that I'm sure you guys are well aware. We love 99. I don't want to see him anywhere near uh, the preseason field. Uh, that's what I'll say about that. So then we look at outside linebackers. You got Michael Hoyt uh, starting first string. Second string is Daniel Hardy. Third string is Kier Thomas. The second Bowser Zilla. Thank you so much for the five. Appreciate you. Um, thank you, by the way, <laughs> he put, thank you, Jake. Appreciate that. Um, Kier Thomas, the sank, uh, Kier Thomas, the second is the third string. And then the fourth string on the outside linebackers is O'Shawn Mathis, uh, the late round pick uh, from this year who transferred kind of all over the place. Um, and I believe he went down with an injury, but yeah, he should be okay at this point. Um, the other outside linebacker spot, Byron Young, man's he is the number one spot there. So that's good to see as a rookie. Nick Hampton is number two and Zach Van Valkenburg is number three. So, you know, some a, a little uh, competition there, but I think really it's going to be Michael Hoyt and Byron Young. Uh, you'll see some rotating in with Daniel Hardy, Nick Hampton, Cure Thomas, obviously Thomas with more of the run game and saying the edge, which he does well. Um, but, you know, that, that's what you see there. And then inside linebackers, we have Ernest Jones. Uh, and mind you guys, the way this is laid out, we're going to have more than 11 guys on the field for defense. That's okay. It's just showing you where these guys are in terms of if they, this role had to be played, who's playing it. Um, we're not going to see too many sets where we see two linebackers, so to speak. But uh, if we do, they're saying Ernest Jones is starting. Uh, then you have Christian Roseboom who's starting. Behind Christian Roseboom is Jacob Hummel and Kalechi Anyalebechi. That's the name to watch, in my opinion. He's got some interesting film. He's my sleeper. If he makes this team, I will not be surprised. Behind Ernest Jones, you have Jaden Woodby, the former safety at a Boston College turned linebacker. You like to see that. Uh, really intriguing there. I like that, that movement from safety to linebacker. Ryan Smenda Jr. and DeAndre Square out of Kentucky is the fourth stringer cornerbacks are as followed you got kobe durant starting darion kendrick starting akello witherspoon starting pretty much what we all kind of have expected to this point kendrick's been dealing with something lately but um you know akello had you know surgery on his finger or whatever that was he has pins in his fingers he's been playing and he's been playing well uh he's had a good camp from what i've been told and this is a guy that i'm willing to to put plant the flag into he is he's somebody i think is going to end up being a really good pickup for the rams kobe durant i think is you know he has the budding you know rise i think of a superstar i think he could really end up being a, a game-breaking level talent uh, in the secondary behind kobe durant you have robert rochelle number uh the second string number third string you have cameron mccutcheon behind darion kendrick in the second string spot you have trey tomlinson 
behind Trey Tomlinson. You have third stringer to Marcus Davis, who I do like. And then Akella Witherspoon behind him. You got Sean Jolly, who I think they like more than people realize. Jordan Jones and then Vincent Gray as the fourth stringer. Uh, Gray seems to be on the outside looking in, but hey, we'll see what happens with preseason. Moving on here to the safeties, we have Jordan Fuller in Russ Yeast starting. Quentin Lake behind Jordan Fuller. John Johnson the third behind Russ Yeast. Jason Taylor the second as the third stringer behind Lake. You got Richard LeCount behind John Johnson the third. And then your fourth string on the first uh line with Jordan Fuller fourth stringers are as followed Rashad Torrance and Quindell Johnson and the fourth stringers on the Russ East line are Taylor uh, Tanner Engel and Tyon Davis and Tyon Davis has turned some heads in camp so I don't know if I necessarily say he's the fourth string but again take this for what you will you know it's take it with a grain of salt I mean it's not the official it's the unofficial um Ethan Evans, punter, Tanner Brown, kicker, Ethan Evans, holder, Alex Ward, long snapper. And then the moment you guys have all been waiting for, because I know you guys have constantly asked about it, punt returner and kick returner. And what's fascinating is there are only three names listed for two positions. Punt returner, Puka Nakua starting, Kyron Williams second string, kick returner Kyron Williams starting Ronnie Rivers second string if Ronnie Rivers wins the kick return job he is on the roster no doubt about it the fact that he's even in the conversation he's listed as the third string running back not to put too much stock into it but Ronnie Rivers spot on this team might be more likely than people are giving credit for he played last year in meaningful games Uh, before they fell completely out of the playoff race and here he is he's the third stringer now what do i take away from this defense i'll tell you what i take away from this defense first off um not going to see aaron donald play in preseason michael hoyt is going to be a little bit of a back and forth i think with the coaching staff whether or not they want to actually play him in preseason personally i would want to see what you have in daniel hardy keir thomas uh, Byron Young, Nick Hampton, O'Shawn Mathis, and Zach Van Valkenburg. That's what I would be focusing on. Ernest Jones better not see the field, okay, in preseason. I don't I don't want him anywhere near the preseason field. I think you're probably going to see Christian Roseboom as uh, the, the green dot there, Jacob Hummel starting next to him, uh, Kalechi Anulabechi, like I said, is a you know underrated name to look out for as well as Jaden would be. And then for corners, there's no point of having Durant out there. We know this guy can play. Darian Kendrick, I don't even want out there. If you think Darian Kendrick is that good and deserves to start, I don't want him out there. So, Akella Witherspoon hasn't played since week four of last year when he went on the IR with a hamstring. I don't know. Maybe I throw him out there. Maybe I give him some spots, right? Maybe I give him a shot. Uh, then you look over at Sean Jolly, Trey Tomlinson, Robert Rochelle, All those guys should be starting. Tamarcus Davis uh, will be playing. Cameron McCutcheon, Jordan Jones, Vincent Gray. Safeties. John Johnson III is likely going to start over Russ Yeast as this progresses, but he's been on the team for one day. So I'm not upset to see that John Johnson isn't starting over Russ Yeast. That's definitely normal, okay? Um, Jordan Fuller should not play in preseason. John Johnson, I don't think I would play him. Russies, Quentin Lake, Jason Taylor the second, Richard LeCount, and then the guys in the fourth string are guys that should play. And as far as special teams goes, I'm not trotting Kyron Williams out there. If I believe that he's my kick returner, and I think he's going to make the team, and he's going to be my second string running back, and he's going to be utilized on third down, and he's getting first team reps, I don't need him in preseason. So I would probably lean more towards Ronnie Rivers, Um, And then I saw Dingus mention Xavier Smith agree with that. Okay, let's now, that was a a long, you know, thing there. Let's now catch up on some comments if we can. Um, Dr. Dingus says Jonah Williams being a backup is crazy over on kick. I am not a fan of our special teams depth chart. Rams must not have learned their lesson putting injury prone guys at returner. Kyron and Puka should not be back there. Um, I like Puka and Kyron back there, but I do also agree with your point uh, to that extent. 
What's up, Joakim? How's it going? Ricardo? Uh, let's see. Miguel? What's up, Jake? Went to the camp. You were right. This defense still wants to eat and compete at a high level. I told you, these guys, it doesn't matter how many times a media member says this team's tanking, this team's going to be bad, this team's ass, this team's whatever adjective you want to describe this team as. These guys are fighting for their lives. They're fighting for their careers. They're fighting because they want to win. They like this, you know, they're not going to just lay down. And so is this going to be the best defense in the history of the NFL? No. Uh, but is this going to be the worst defense? Also, no. You can't be the worst defense the way people are talking if you have Aaron Donald on your defense, Ernest Jones and Kobe Durant. If I were to make a big three on each unit, it's pretty obvious where we're going to go with the offense, right? The offense is as follows. You got uh, Matthew Stafford, Cooper Cup, Cam Akers. That's your big three. I don't care what anyone says. That's your big three on the offense. On the defense, if you were going to go on the defensive side, the big three is quite simply Aaron Donald, Ernest Jones, and Kobe Durant. That's your big three, Okay. John Johnson comes back to be in that 2019 John Johnson before or, or 2020, I believe, before he left the Rams and went to the Browns. If that John Johnson shows up, that's part of the big three. But for now, I like the big three I just mentioned. I think the Rams have enough talent on both sides of the ball to win football games that even a game that they don't deserve to be in, I think they can stay in. A game that they deserve to win, I think they'll finish. That's why I haven't won 10, 11 games this year because I think they're going to win those games that maybe in years past they don't deserve to win. You know, I, I, I at least that's how I see it. Um, you saw Tutu Atwell as wide receiver three as well, Sanaka. Uh, what's up, Gil? What do you think of Shanahan saying Brock Purdy is the real deal? I think he might have stuck his foot in his mouth. He's going to keep saying it. He's going to keep defending it. Um I don't know. I, I mean, Brock Purdy will be Brock Purdy. You know, we'll find out who he really is once the tape is out there, once the pressure's out. I mean, that's the thing. That's really what it comes down to. Your watch parties you have, do you show the game? I can't show the game, CJ. Otherwise, I would get copyright struck. Uh, so I can't do that. It's a copyright issue. Um, Jay, live before my fantasy draft. Let's get it. Yes, Carrot. Appreciate you. Uh, what's up, Shop by Nolan? How we doing? Um, probably the first time I've called you that in a while. I normally just call you Nolan, but it is what it is. You're still my guy. You know that. Uh, Saints are like an annoying ex. Keep talking about me just to feel better about themselves. You know, I never really get that with Saints fans. Um, I, I don't, I don't know. I mean, I never see it anymore. I know it happened a lot when it first happened, like when they first lost, but I haven't seen it since. Uh, how are the Rams looking injury wise? Well, I mean, right now, there, there's not really an injury report. So we just know that, like, Cooper Cup is, you know, nicked up a little bit. They're on Kendrick. Um, but, I mean, they're relatively as healthy as you want them to be, I would say, at this point in the year. Um, knock on wood. You know, obviously, things can that can change for the worst. But, you know, that that's what I'll say in regards to that. Um, let's see... I like the depth chart, Jack. Yeah, it's a little weird. I, I don't really like the or. I think the whole point of a depth chart is to literally make it a black and white statement. This guy's a starter. This guy's a second stringer. Not like, yeah, he might be, he might not. Um, but it's also a little bit of a, a PR thing as well. So uh, I get it. I don't put too much stock into it. Um, let's see here. We all see... LOL, but don't block him unless he gets real disrespectful. Exactly, Alex. Exactly. Good on you for saying that. Um, let's see. Wow, you guys are still talking about the Saints. Uh, <laughs> hit the like button, Ramley. Yes, please. Be sure to hit the like button if you can over on YouTube. Um, really does help me out. We're trying to get to 100. Fish, how you doing? Snapple product placement. I mean, at some point or another, hopefully somebody higher up in the Snapple world will be like, this man has been drinking Snapple since the Stone Age. We got to give him a sponsorship. I don't know. I love Snapple. But at one point when I was in the studio, 
ask Nolan, ask some of the other guys here that were watching me back when I had my studio. I was drinking ginger ale, uh, you know, Canada dry and, and, you know, all the time, essentially. People were like, bro, this dude literally always has a Canada dry on his desk. So I went from that. I guess I just have like this phase, right? I go through phases, except Snapple is just not a phase. I like constantly drink this thing. Uh, Canada dry was a phase and then um, ice and then ice never like they kept getting back to me and then they're like yeah you know what we're not gonna go about it this time around so ice didn't give me a uh a sparkling ice or whatever didn't give me a sponsorship so then i just stopped drinking it and i drink snapple all the time because it's the best stuff on earth see snapple i'm trying uh <laughs> it's funny that you brought that up let's see here we got yeah, I'm very excited to see what Young and Hoyt can do. Absolutely. Um, Kobe Turner at nose tackle. Yeah, I don't, I don't think he's gonna play nose tackle, but who knows? Looking at our cornerbacks, a little worried. A lot of unproven guys that hopefully could step up. Glad Christian Roseboom finally made it to the top of the depth chart. That's what hard work, uh, hard work pays off, man. You're a UDFA. In the NFL, if you work your tail off, you can you can do that. I think the key is sticking with the same roster. As long as this guy keeps sticking with the Rams, he has a, he's built a uh, you know a reputation in, in the league. He's built a reputation you know with the Rams. So so it's funny that you say that, Fish, because I actually just had a Schweppes. Uh, Instead of a can to dry not long ago. That's funny that you said that. But I mean, I'll be honest with you. I never had it, but I think my favorite would probably be Seagram's. Seagram's ginger ale, I think it's my favorite. But I never I never see it anywhere, so it's like I don't have it all the time. Uh, I also don't really love soda, but the only soda I'll have is, is uh, ginger ale, really. Maybe a Sprite here and there. Um, when is the first cut? That's a great question. When is cut day? August 29th. Wow. So they changed it. There's no first cut. There is one cut. <laughs> August 29th is going to be a bloodbath. And I feel bad because a lot of guys are going to lose either their dreams of playing in the NFL or they're going to lose their jobs. Um, the first cut day is the only cut day. It's August 29th and that's it. That is going to be, you know, what is it? Black Monday or whatever. When all the coaches get fired, it's going to be like that. So that's, that's not going to be fun. Not going to be fun. Um, it, you know, and, and I think that's the, that's the thing about that. You're welcome, Mark. Monty, appreciate you. I love that. That I got that. Uh, I forgot I said to the the Pokemon. I don't even know what that does. Is that like you got an item? I think it is in Pokemon. That's what that sound is. Um, <laughs> we like that sound either way. You acquired something. Monty, thank you so much for the five. Do you think we beat the Niners this year? I need a W so bad over that organization. They own us through the season. I think they win one of those games and I think it's going to be week two when they're trying to figure out their whole quarterback thing. I think later on in the year, that finale in San Francisco, I think the Rams are going to lose that kind of obnoxious. They have to play that game, but that's just me. Uh, Land shark Durant ball and during camp. That doesn't shock me at all. Smack the like button. Appreciate you, Nolan. Uh, hit the like button guys. Appreciate you, Ricardo. I would have liked Xavier Smith in the returner role. What's up, Cameron? How you doing? Uh, let's see. New center. The the only new center that I could see is Coleman Shellen starting over Brian Allen, since it, it's almost always assumed Brian Allen's going to start over Coleman Shellen. I could see Coleman Shellen winning that. Um. Let's see. Oh, you're late, Bearded Soul? Oh, damn. Well, I'll tell you what, guys. 
if you want to follow along or you're you know you missed out uh there's a link to the depth chart it's on the ram site if you want to go there while we're watching or whatever you know that works um i can't read it all over again <laughs> but it is right there uh let's see here i'm just because i'm answering questions now i gotta catch up a lot of questions here higby over acres lol that's fair i mean higby is arguably the best tight end in rams history so you know uh has brett ripon been turning heads in camp thought it was bennett's job at the two spot i have not heard of that no logan bruss at right tackle that's interesting yeah they moved him there love your content and outlook on the rams this year thank you barry what about warren mcclendon so mcclendon got dinged up he is back but i think it kind of put him behind the eight ball a little bit um and rams fan says root beer is my favorite what about Stewart's gingy? I, you know, Stewart's isn't bad fish. Cyber Monday, <laughs> completely unrelated to Rams content, but I haven't been following the NFL too much in the offseason. Did McCaffrey sign with the 49ers or did he go somewhere else this in the offseason? McCaffrey is on the 49ers, so he signed a deal, long-term deal with Carolina, and when they traded him to the Niners uh, at the deadline last year, they basically absorb that contract so he's under contract for the next three four years or whatever it is it's a long deal though uh it's a lot of money to be paying a running back who we know running backs fall off uh sooner than other positions so we'll see what ends up happening there uh surprising that kobe turner can play nose tackle yeah it is a little weird to see him listed there snapple can cut snapple cut the check appreciate you nolan uh, maybe a few words on our first five games, Jake. Worried? Um, well, let's look at the first five games, right? So the Rams schedule here. I know they start off with the Seahawks, the 49ers, Bengals. I couldn't remember. I think it's the Colts four. Okay. Colts. Yeah. Colts week four, Eagles five. Okay. So I have the Rams beating Seattle, beating the Niners, losing to the Bengals, beating the Colts, and losing the Eagles. So I have the, in the first three, I have them winning uh three out of the five going three and two then beating the cardinals four and two uh beating the steelers five and two the cowboys and i think they're gonna lose to the packers there they'll probably lose to seattle some stupid thing there they'll beat the cardinals um you know they'll they'll lose a stupid game to like washington or the saints they'll lose to the ravens they'll beat the browns they'll lose to the 49ers they'll beat the giants that, that's kind of you know kind of a rough thing there yeah he that was the first year actually he's played a full year in a while first year in a while <clears throat> do nfl teams make similar moves like nhl deadline so it's not as impactful the nfl trade deadline is pretty dead you get some big moves leading up to it every now and then but like the nhl i think you always get moves you always get a timo meyer here you get a, a vladimir tarasenko there i feel like it's always movement with the nhl maybe some years are better than others but the nfl it's like you don't really get a lot of stuff. The Rams just happened to trade for Von Miller around the deadline uh, the year prior, but you don't really see that. I think player movement since the Rams adopted the F them picks and really made that known and they won a Super Bowl. I think teams have kind of tried to emulate that a little bit. Um, and so we've seen more player movement, I think, since that happened, since they went out and got Matthew Stafford. So that's what I'll say in regards to that. But I I mean, is it like the NHL? I guess there's some player movement, but not enough to really say that. <laughs> Canada Dry cut the check too. What flavor is that, Jake? So this is lemon. I only rock lemon and raspberry, but peach is really good too. It's just not like if I have to choose between those three, I'm choosing the two I mentioned over peach. But I, I can dig with peach. Snapple ain't bad. So there's this new ingredient or this new uh, formula or whatever, like Snapple uses now. They went entirely all natural. Um, I forget, like I heard about it, but yeah, it's it's so much better. It just tastes better like than it used to. And it already tastes really good, but you know, but yeah, this is the lemon. 
Is Ankrum a lock at right guard, or does it depend on how left tackle and center play out? Shelton Jackson and Nopum can play there. I think Ankrum is a lock at right guard. I think they've constantly complimented him. They've used him there. He's getting all the reps. Ankrum is a lock at right guard. I don't think anybody has a chance of beating him out because there's nobody else to really beat him out. Nopum, I think that they would go with Ankrum. I think they really like Ankrum. He's a very likable guy too. You know, everything he was doing for, you know, the, the Jewish community, you know, all the anti-Semitism and like the, you know, the speaking out against it. And then, you know, just the community service he was doing. Um, there's just so much that like this guy's been doing. I talked with him, Alexis and I both interviewed him before he truly was a Ram. It was after he was drafted, but, um, just a good dude, good human being, easy to root for. So I'm glad to see it. Fanta is God tier. I never really got into Fanta. I know that's kind of weird, but Howard Stern was a big time Snapple advocate back in the day. What changed? <laughs> Does he not like Snapple anymore? Uh, did you go over the depth chart yet? I did. You joined late. I understand. I mean, the big, the big notes of the depth chart is that everybody that you thought was starting is slated to start. Um, except, you know, Kobe Turner listed as nose tackle Copeland versus Ernest Brown, the fourth, which is a little bit of a shock there. Uh, if you didn't believe in Tutu Atwell, I don't know what to tell you. He's starting. Uh, Tremaine Ankrum at right guard. If you haven't been paying attention to that, no boom versus Alec Jackson, Brian Allen versus Coleman shell. And I mean, it's pretty much what we would expect Russ East over John Johnson, the third, because John Johnson, the third just got there. He has to be acclimated to everything. Um, but yeah, Dominic says I was mentioned on lockdown Rams as the source for JJ three coming back. I appreciate that. You know, I don't, I don't really get a chance to watch many, you know, anything, other than you know the stuff that i'm watching to prepare for what i'm doing um but i did catch that i think doug seems like a genuine dude um i don't watch their show i don't have time to watch really anything but uh you know i've seen some things some some highlights and doug seems like a really good host so i don't know maybe i'm wrong but uh that's that's the vibe i've gotten is that doug seems like good people so good for them um you're welcome mark i just saw that you probably i've probably already said you're welcome but it is what it is um uh, looking forward to rams preseason game saturday got tickets in section 100 can't wait to see uh ron rivers play love it sounds like he he'll probably start too monty brown has boxing content are you serious let me i'm gonna go to this channel right now Let's see what we got. Monty Brown TV's got 61.3K subscribers. I'm looking at a video of yours right now. Monty, appreciate you. Oh, I thought I was already subscribed to you. Well, I'll change that. I subscribed. Everyone go uh, subscribe to a fellow uh, Ramley member here. Monty Brown TV. Appreciate the five, though, man. Like you, You've been so great to me. Um, I actually was not aware that you do boxing content. I'm a big boxing fan. Now, I don't exactly love where the, the industry is nowadays because uh, I'm not a big fan of, like, YouTubers boxing. I know the irony because I'm a YouTuber, but um, it seems like you're more focused on actual boxers. So I respect there. Like, I don't see your first eight videos that pop up for me. I don't see Jake Paul in any of them. So props to you. Now, obviously, I'm sure you probably have to cover stuff like that, but still good stuff. I love it. And when did you start the channel? 2015, 23 million views. Love it. Keep it up. 
you definitely have me as a as a sub now um all right let's see here all oh, the orioles are being the astros fish well that's some good stuff yeah chat can definitely tell you're an nfl noob fish it's okay <laughs> <laughs> uh let's see here let's catch up on the the doughboy smack the like y'all alec appreciate you doughboys jake is the man appreciate you alec let's see here i have not played remnant 2 i came really close to buying it instead i got uh, Baldur's Gate 3 so I'll be I'll be streaming that on kick I streamed it yesterday fish who uh, you see in there opus in the chat on the screen a uh, friend of mine IRL uh, him and I were playing with uh, two of our other friends so um, I know those are you my guy I, I Alec I know you're, you're texting me you're like those are me I, I know who Alec is <laughs> thanks Teddy appreciate you subscribing means a lot it's funny i'm trying to catch up and youtube's like yeah i remember those comments you're trying to catch up on well i'm gonna make it really hard for that to happen it's like yo thanks youtube that was sick bro uh let's see my god yeah you, of course you're laughing <laughs> uh no boom beat out aj say that again Ella. what what's his money so okay um no boom didn't necessarily beat out aj they're on the same line which is what i really don't like that again what i was saying earlier if you missed it depth charts are supposed to be black and white like it's cut and dry are you a starter or are you a second stringer with these unofficial ones they always do the half ass i can't decide so i'm gonna put them both on the same line and that's what we have there so yeah guys be sure to hit the like button uh or the thumbs up whatever you call it if you're on mobile right now you just swipe out of the chat and you'll be able to hit it really would help me out pushes the the video across youtube youtube's like oh crap now we have a party and then they start pushing more and more and more people that way so that's how that works but likes are so important in the algorithm i can't even tell you like it, that's the thing i always say if you like a certain content creator maybe they're smaller it doesn't really matter the size if you hit that thumbs up on it does wonders for that content creator it is so important it really just lets because like basically the youtube algorithm i feel like i'm always saying this sound like a broken record but still in case you guys don't know the youtube algorithm essentially takes your watch time matters don't get me wrong how long you spend with your watch session matters and how long you spend on a certain video but if you don't like that video youtube is going to assume you didn't like the video if you watched it for a long time and didn't like it doesn't matter they're gonna assume you didn't like it so then they won't recommend it but if you like it then they're gonna recommend it and so that's kind of the tricky part about the algo uh do i know anything about ron a running back coach ron gold if so what does he bring to the position group that maybe we need he's a veteran and i believe he came out of stanford if i'm not mistaken he was coaching at stanford and I don't know if he coached, uh, what, what the hell is his name? Bryce Young? No. What the hell is his name? Bryce Love. I don't know if he coached Bryce Love. Uh, I'm going to look it up now. So Stanford running back coach. Oh yeah. He definitely coached Bryce Love. Okay. 2017 to 2022. Cause Bryce Love was, he had to have been there at that point. I know I scouted him. He was pretty recent. I think injuries caught up with him and, uh, yeah so he was drafted in oh no he wasn't draft no he was drafted fourth round 2019 so yeah he coached bryce love and bryce love broke out in 2017 he had over 2,000 yards rushing he was second in the nation rushing yards uh was just absolutely insane so yeah ron gold uh coached him so that i knew it was stanford he was also the head coach of uc davis um was a running back coach at cal back in 1997 to 2012 so that's cool uh was the defensive backs coach for boise state defensive backs coach for portland state and he was a graduate assistant at oregon so this is somebody that's really kind of he's seen it from the defensive back side 
he's seen it as a head coach and now he's seen it in the run game so that's cool that, that's kind of you know the more you know about ron gold there the rams running back coach the more you know where's that graphic when you need it right um all right let's see get the likes up appreciate you nolan um i almost read botrix that's funny i almost read what a bot just put as a comment that's how you know this is stan looks like uncle rico that's funny Yeah, Edwin, I uh so I've I've broken news before, but I feel like this is the first time where I had just countless people. You're always going to have your haters. I'm not going to pay any mind to that, but um countless people were were giving me credit for it. So it was cool. It it was definitely cool to get credit. Um and of course, you know, <laughs> definitely uh yeah. Let's see. My opinion on the LA Rams power running back, like the power running game. I mean, I know Cam added uh, more weight. Like, let's see, what, what was Cam at? And I'm just waiting for them to upgrade, like update these uh, these measurements because I know they're not true. So if Akers was 217 last year, he's probably around 230 now. Maybe 227, 228. So, I mean, he's definitely going to be more of a force, I'd, I'd say, as just power running. Looking at the depth chart, who would who could be a surprise cut? All right, this is a good question. Um, shocker, it came from you, Dr. Dingus. Uh, surprise cut. All right, I'll give you surprise cuts. You ready for this? Let's go through it. So wide receiver. I think for some people, a surprise cut would be Lance McCutcheon. That's not a surprise cut for me. I don't think they're keeping eight receivers. I don't think they cut Skoranek. I think the locks are Van, Demarcus, Tutu, Puka, Cooper, and, and Ben. Um, so I don't think there's going to be any surprise cuts there. Tyler Johnson might be kept extra surprise cut in the offensive line. I think they might keep everybody on the offensive line. They, they might need to They're, look out for a late uh, training camp preseason signing of a guy like um, I, I don't know if he's still available, but Ode Abushi, if he is available, look out for him. Look out for Inseki, some of the guys from last year that played well i would say just be on the lookout of that they could sign somebody as far as surprise cuts brett rippon uh would be a surprise cut at this point uh because you know the way the league is going the direction it's going in they're trying to make it easier to keep three you know quarterbacks and play them uh in the game so you don't run into an issue without quarterbacks so It'd be a little surprising to cut Rippin with the new rules, but I could see him as a surprise cut. I could see Zach Evans. Some people would have an issue with that. Um, I could see them cutting Zach Evans or Royce Freeman even uh, on the defensive side. I'm going to say surprise cut here. Hmm. Keir Thomas could be a surprise cut uh jacob hummel could be a surprise cut i like him but he could be robert rochelle could be a surprise cut uh safety i don't know i think it's all gonna be pretty cut and dry it should be pretty cut and dry i don't think there's gonna be too many like big surprises maybe there will i don't know maybe i'm missing something but Oh, uh, Hunter Long. I think Hunter Long has a chance to be cut. I'm not kidding. I don't think they want to do it, but I could definitely see it. <sighs> I 
Cam hitting the AD workout plan. That's one way to do it. Uh, Logan Bruss, I don't know if he's going to have a great year because I don't think he's going to play that much, Willie. That's the only issue. I'm hoping Rochelle makes the team, but I could definitely see him getting cut. Um, yeah, Saffold, Reisner, good, good call. I'd probably go with Reisner. I think they're rolling what they have, but I would probably say if they go after anything, it would probably be somebody like that. Yeah. That's what I would say. Oh my God. Kyle Tucker. Grand slam. Sorry, fish. I know you're really excited about the Orioles being up six, three on the Astros going into the ninth. So much for that. GG's <laughs> rip. It's over. <laughs> I just saw it come up on my phone. I have it on a dock and I was just like, oh boy. Oh boy. This ain't good. <laughs> this is not good. I think they should have a good tight end core. Surprise breakout player. Um, Akella Witherspoon, I don't think people realize how good this guy could end up being for them. I would also say Tutu Atwell, another guy I just don't think people realize how good he can actually be for the Rams. So I think those would be the two surprises on each side of the ball. If you want to get more deep, big, big surprise, Demarcus Robinson on the offense. I think he could really, you know, bloom and then, uh, you know, deep, defensive one would probably be I'm going to say it Ernest Brown the fourth I would love Reisner Alexis and I interviewed Reisner what's up Jeremiah I'm trying to see oh my god Kyle Tucker I haven't been fancy you just got me 47 points <laughs> no big deal no big deal That's funny, though. Let's see. Gabe, appreciate you following me on kick. We're at 336. I am gaming tonight. Yeah. So I'm going to uh, wrap up JE Live and then I'll probably uh, game over on kick. We won a ranked Warzone match last night. Me, Gary Sheffield Jr., and Alex, double X Alex, who's in the chat somewhere. He's been a little quiet, but I, I know he's he's out there somewhere. Um, Yeah, ranked, ranked Warzone 2.0 match. Pretty awesome. McVay said that they signed JJ three because they felt it was a chance to be able to upgrade their secondary. I'll say that. I think there are way too many people that looked into that. Like, Oh, it's something that Russ East or Quentin Lake aren't doing. No, I think you have a chance to upgrade your secondary. Jordan Fuller is not guaranteed to stay healthy. Okay. He's always hurt. If he stays healthy, he's going to be a hell of a player, but the guy's always injured. So there is absolutely no issue at all for me to go out and get John Johnson the third none and I thought about that because I think we talked about this and I said you know what I think I'd rather go after a Zach Cunningham if I could get any you know free agent someone asked me this question uh, a few days ago if I could get any free agent I would go after Zach Cunningham or uh, or Miles Jack and of course then right after that John Johnson became a Ram 
and Miles Jack and Zach Cunningham became Eagles. They both went to the Eagles. Did you see that? It's crazy. It's like, what? So, yeah. Tremaine Ancrum. Yeah, it's not a bad option to put him in the spotlight. Let's see. Don't forget, guys, if you want to go follow me over on kick, I'm giving away a free NFL jersey and I will drop Gary's um, at in the chat. So definitely go and check that out. Exactly. There are so many people that are like Witherspoon's trash. I'm like, you do realize how good Witherspoon was before he got hurt. And now he's healthy for the most part. I mean, you know, he's, he's banged up a little bit, but you know, that's the irony. Dr. Dingus, you said it. You said the quiet part out loud. Jordan Fuller is on his last year of his contract. JJ three plays well enough and the Rams could retain him and let Fuller go. That's the, the irony. I saw it. Turf Show Times said it best. The next uh, John Johnson the third ended up being John Johnson the third. Interesting when you think about it. Richard Sherman and Skip Bayless. That sounds like a disaster. So you have Richard Sherman, who's a Stanford graduate, incredibly intelligent dude, knows football, ins and outs, entertaining. And you got Skip Bayless, who's a black hole. I mean, it's like it's gonna be such a waste of Richard Sherman's talent in my opinion do the Rams have someone that can cover tight ends they do John Johnson the third can cover George Kittle he can cover uh Trey McBride he can cover Zach Ertz he can cover Noah Fant I mean all those guys But it's not just him. Like, Jacoby Durant could do that. Okello could do that. Quentin Lake, Rusty East, I think, could do that. No, no, I'm not watching it either. I don't... Well, I mean, you guys already know. I don't watch the mainstream stuff. I do not care. Like, earlier today, I like Colin Coward, but I was disappointed in the herd um, to see... Like, for whatever reason, they decided to run this... I mean, you could tell they just had nothing to talk about. Um, they ran this like graphic showing all these quarterbacks that can't win a Super Bowl, and they put Dwayne Haskins on there, who is dead. Like, I, I mean, it literally costs zero dollars and zero cents to be a good human being. Like, why do that? Like, I thought that was really, really tasteless, in my opinion. Um, and I mean, in addition to that, like EJ Manuel was on there and it was just like the weirdest segment ever. It's like who greenlit that? It was really distasteful. I mean, I don't know. I just, that really bugged me. The whole thing with, uh, you know, Dwayne Haskins really bugs me. Um, yeah, don't get me started on Jason McIntyre, but but no, it was actually Colin Coward. That that was the bummer. I actually like Colin. I always have, but that was really distasteful. And again, I'm not going to be somebody that you do something wrong and I'm not going to, you know, witch hunt you. I'm not going to cancel you. I'm not going to ever like watch you again or anything like that. Although I don't really watch the herd. I just see clips. But man, like it, it was it was really tasteless. It, it exactly alex it was like skip bayless levels like when i mean we we can laugh about it now but it wasn't funny 
Um, DeMar Hamlin is literally being revived on the field, and Skip Bayless is like, come on now, what's going to happen? Get them off the field right now so we can play this damn game. It's like, Skip, someone might be dead. Why do you care? It's just a game. They'll figure it out. This is a massive industry. This is a massive business. Yeah, the Logan Paul Suicide Woods video. Yep, that was tasteless too. I mean, I believe good people can make poor decisions and make poor mistakes and do things that are tasteless and do things that are, I don't know, incredibly tone deaf. It's more so a pattern, and, like, Skip has that pattern. A lot of these guys have that pattern. Colin doesn't have that pattern. So that's why it was, like, it was it was really annoying to see that because I, I do really like Colin. I've defended him. Um, my issue with, with sports media the way it is, the mainstream, is we could talk about depth charts. We could talk in detail on this show like Russ Yeast, Jordan Fuller, Akella Witherspoon, Darren Kendrick, Kobe Durant. That's their secondary. If you listen, next time you listen to any mainstream sports media, you're going to hear they got a quarterback, they got an offensive coordinator, they got a head coach, they got a guy that can run the ball, they have a star, they have another star, they have a guy that can rush the passer. Like, I, I would like more than that, right? It's always very like dry it's always very you can fill in the blanks i'm too lazy to and for me is it that hard to prepare ahead of time a depth chart in your notes now full disclosure i have the depth chart in front of me so it's not like i'm doing it off the top of my head but i could do it off the top of my head Jeremiah is spot on. They have good players. I mean, I've heard this so many times. Like, you know, you'll get Drew McIntyre. Oh, sorry, the WWE wrestler. Uh, Jason McIntyre. Drew McIntyre is more relevant than uh, Jason McIntyre. But um, you'll get Jason McIntyre like they're devoid of talent. Like their offensive line was just bad. It's just bad. It's like... Are you going to name any of those bad players? They're just bad. Okay. Thank you so much for your contributions. Oh, they can't do that, J.E. It's all vague analysis. That's why I don't respect old media talking heads' opinions. I do, because guess what, Dr. Dingus? It's not that hard, okay? You know how I learned all this stuff? I played Madden when I was a kid. I don't like Madden anymore, and I don't play it. I still know it. I still do the research and whatnot. You know, if you don't know it, put it in front of you. There's no excuse. <laughs> you see, the, the, like, the, you know, they always have the papers and stuff in front of Why don't you have a depth chart in front of you? Is it that hard to look down? I would respect you more looking down at a piece of paper than saying they got a good offense, a good defense, a lot of good players, some stars. I think they win this, the NFC West. Like, wh what does that even mean? That's the thing, Kareem. I'm not going to witch hunt Colin Cowherd, um, but you know how it is. As soon as we talk about the herd or anything like that, Somebody brings up Jason McIntyre. I blow a gasket. And it, then we start talking. But I mean, uh, you know, this is why, if you're wondering, this is why my show, Payo Time, Locked On, uh, Rams Brothers, Downtown Rams Podcast, Believe in Rams, why all of these generate traffic. It's why all of these are listened to uh, like religion. Because fans of their team the fans nowadays are way more intelligent than they used to be and don't take that as disrespect because the people i'm talking about have gotten older and they've also learned because of technology technology has made it easier than ever to be a fan and be a knowledgeable one at that so i'm not going to listen to somebody who doesn't know at least close to as much as i do let alone not even close it is all for views And that's the thing, like, even though I liked, like, Colin's take was like, 
I know I'm going to be called a homer, but I don't like this five win thing that we're talking about the Rams. I just disagree with. I agreed with him, even though he didn't really bring up a time. He's like, they have a quarterback. They have <laughs> it's the, it's the same thing every time. Quarterback, head coach, superstar, superstar, running back. Offensive line is OK. Defense like I, I like to add a little bit more than that, but at least I gave him credit for that. But yeah, it's engagement farming for sure. I'm telling you every single time, listen, every single time mainstream, it's always they got a quarterback, they got a head coach, they got a defense that likes to play football, they got an offensive line that's good, they play in a winning organization, they play in a winning culture, a city likes them, they have a good home stadium. I'm like, what the hell does the home stadium have to do with anything? (laughs) I mean, it's every time. The more, like, now that I mentioned it, you'll never hear the end of it. Quarterback, head coach, superstar. They got stars. They got players. They got coaches. And they got fans. They got championships. And they got stadiums. I saw that ESPN was trying to get Colin Coward back. Dude, I know. When they say they have a home stadium, oh, my God. Now, there are teams that have home stadiums, and there are teams that have home stadiums. I'm like, what am I supposed to do with this information? (laughs) I don't know. It It is funny. They're definitely a team in this league. Exactly, Jeremiah. And this team, when when this team gets going, they go. (laughs) Monty, appreciate you. We team Jake over here, and we're going to go on a ride and support you until the end. You give us hope, and you break down the information thoroughly. Appreciate you, Monty. Thank you so much for the five. God, I love everything about that Super Chat graphic. First off, great movie if you've never seen it. And I think it just died and froze. Like, now it's just stuck there. So I don't know. Anyway, love the super chat graphic. Love the Pokemon sound. But yeah, it's always that whole they gotta, you know, they're they're gonna be a, a true football team. Oh, this team can ball. These players can play. That guy is a that guy brings his his lunch pail and he's ready to go. He's a true gamer, a grinder. It's like, oh, LA Rams appreciate you. That was a weird one. Was that, am I losing my mind or anybody that played uh, Cyberpunk 2077, did that not sound exactly like Cyberpunk 2077 when somebody like looks at you? I don't even think I like changed anything about that alert, but that just sounded like I was playing Cyberpunk 2077 and I was trying to uh, like sneak and somebody was like, hey, it was that sound it makes like ding. I don't know. They have in a defense, a, an offense, a defense, a special teams unit. They're going to be hard to beat. Here's the guy who, <laughs> who shows up early and goes home late. Jake just exposed every media rant when it comes to football. Hey, I'm just saying. And it's funny because like baseball too. Like, here's the thing. You want to see good baseball, MLB Network does a great job. But now it's like, it's just, oh, my God, it's so funny. I don't know who's going to beat them. They got strong arms. They got good pitching. They got good hitting. They went out and they got a bat at the deadline. They got an arm at the deadline. They got a good bullpen. Their coach is good. Their owner's not afraid, afraid to spend money. I'm clearly not talking about the Yankees. Um, <laughs> you know, it's like stuff like that. Oh, and hockey. Dude, don't get, me, don't get me started about mainstream hockey analysis. They're the more physical team. This dude, like, learned, like, the word forecheck the other day. They, they're really good on the forecheck. They're a physical team. 
They're they're a fast team. They're they're locked in. They got a lot of talent. Doesn't name a single guy. <laughs> and they can really get that that crowd rocking in that arena. They're winning the Stanley Cup, right? I didn't even hear a player's name, and I already know this team is going to win the Stanley Cup, right? From that analysis. The NBA. I mean, they got stars. They got more stars. They're playing in Miami, L.A., New York. <laughs> a NHL pregame analysis is always on mute. Oh, yeah. It's it can be bad. It can be bad. LOL, they hype up a team and then when they lose, when it matters, they got dominated. That's so true. That is so true. Oh my god. Or like the Cowboys. It'll just be like, you know, Dax throws four picks. You know, the Cowboys lost today because C D Lamb dropped that touchdown in the end zone. They almost won, but C D Lamb dropped that touchdown. Dak puts it right where it needs to be, and it's all C D Lamb's fault. He dropped the touchdown. We're gonna ignore the fact that he completely destroyed the defensive back off the line of scrimmage. We're gonna ignore and uh, ignore the fact that he was wide open for a country mile until Dak waited until the final second to throw the ball and then he got contacted. Uh, but as long as we can avoid giving Dak any any flack, then we're good. Good Lord. You guys ever see that? Didn't think TNT hockey analysis was too bad, but oh my God, ESPN was so awful. They have like nobody. They fired everybody. Like they had, uh, what's his face? Um, oh, I forget his name. Melrose. Barry Melrose. The dude is a, a hockey savant. He coached for the Kings. Like, Barry Melrose is loved by people. And I love listening to him talk, even when I wasn't that into hockey when I was younger. And then they got rid of him, and I'm like, I don't even know who's doing hockey analysis. I don't know. Oh, God. Every time with the Cowboys, there was always excuses. Um, every time I turned on like ESPN when I was younger, everyone just was on a witch hunt to ruin Tony Romo's name. Now everyone loves him, the announcer, but I'm old enough to remember when everyone used to make fun of him because of the, uh, the Jessica Simpson thing. They said he was looking up in the press box and like at Jessica Simpson. And that's why he dropped the ball in the playoffs. Why is he holding the ball in the playoffs? That's what I'd like to know. Why is my starting quarterback my, you know, kick holder? He shouldn't be the placeholder. Should be the backup quarterback or the punter. But people never got over that. And Cowboys fans to this day say Dak is better. They say Romo sucked and all that. Bro, if you gave Romo the defense that Dak has had and the consistent offensive line that Dak has had, and Ezekiel freaking Elliott, Romo would have won a Super Bowl, and you guys wouldn't have last seen your, your last Super Bowl in the 90s. Isn't Zeke going to the Patriots? I'm actually not sure where he's going now. We have to be honest. Zeke is holding back Dak's quarterback play. Um, He isn't on the roster, sir. <laughs> Oh my God, man. That was. Zeke is heading to Golden Corral. Good Lord. Do you guys remember? It wasn't that long ago. Do you remember? And this is actually pro Dak here. Um, Skip Bayless was like mad that Dak Prescott was like upset that his brother was like he he basically offed himself so his brother commits suicide right and Dak is is distraught because obviously anyone would be um and I I felt for Dak like mental illness is real and I'm not kidding you Skip Bayless had a whole freaking segment on how his mental health is essentially like a weakness to the Dallas Cowboys offense do you guys remember that? 
Like this is what I like. He literally does not have a, he does not have a stoppage when it comes to that. I remember like it was yesterday. I get on Dak because I think he's overrated. But if you're gonna get on him because he he feels feelings, that ain't the move. Good lord, Skip. Good lord. What's up, Rams House TV? Showing me love on Instagram always. Appreciate you guys. Is Zeke going back to the Cowboys? Tell me he's not. No, Skip is a definitely a time suck. All right, let's look. Zeke Elliott, where the hell's he going? Kareem Hunt signed with the Saints, so I'm sure he's going to get signed soon. Okay, so now it's the Jets or the Cowboys? That's the latest? Where'd the Patriots go? Did he just have, like, dinner with Mac Jones? And that's probably what did it. He had a dinner with Mac Jones, and he's like, nope, not coming here. Thank you, Fish. Appreciate you, my guy. Hopefully, we'll play some Baldur's Gate 3 tomorrow. Hopefully. Dalvin Cook has been a lock with the Jets, the Dolphins, going back, you know, with his brother in Buffalo. I know Dak's not allowed to grieve, according to Skip Bayless. That uh, Dominic, I'm with you, but I didn't watch it. I would see clips where Shannon Sharp would just own Skip Bayless every which way. It was so funny to me. I'll never forget when S Shannon said on his show, like, the Rams and Matthew Stafford are going to beat Tampa Bay and Tom Brady in Tampa. And Skip was practically in tears. And then it actually happened. And he's like, you lost. You lost. It's over. And, like, he was all like, mm, like, you know, it was great. And that's the problem. It's my turn. I told you it was my turn. Like, how is this guy making so much money? I cannot even, for the love, life of me, believe it. You got to run a 12K? Oh, good Lord. That would never be me, so good on you for doing that. It's funny. You could feel like you're in shape, and then you see your friends running a 12K, and you're like, yeah, I'm not in shape, am I? <laughs> I go to the gym all the time, but as soon as I see somebody running a 12K, it's nope. I'm overweight. I'm out of shape. It is what it is. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah. Shannon Sharp is forever cemented in meme history. When he's drinking the Mountain Dew. Oh, oh boy. Yeah. Like, I love that one. I should make that the, uh, the gift that pops up every time somebody, uh, <laughs> probably not. Every time somebody subscribes, just have... <laughs> oh boy yeah <laughs> like every single time <laughs> oh my god skip was absolutely in shambles Running a 12K is diabolical. Yeah, Nolan, uh, you'd never be able to catch me doing that. Oh, you're not running the 12K fish. Okay. <laughs> I, I see what you're saying. Yeah, Brady definitely didn't outplay Stafford. Brady got lucky that the Rams fumbled four times. 
None of which was Stafford's fault. But hey, it's the way it be sometimes. It really do be like that, <laughs> as they say. <laughs> oh, man. So, chat, what's new? I feel like we're just going to we're gonna ride this out. Maybe I'll play some Warzone on a kick in a little bit. I don't know. But I don't feel like hanging up on you guys. We still have over 100 people in here. You still lost. You lost, Skip. You lost. I'm very excited for Saturday. Should be a lot of fun. 9 p.m. Eastern time. That's 6 p.m. Your time. And we'll be on here. We'll be doing our, uh, our watch party. To be honest with you, that's, I mean, that's a good question. Um, I kind of key in on all the rookies. Sounds good, Fish. <laughs> I kind of key in on, on the rookies. Like, I want to see, uh, I really want to see Anthony Richardson. I want to see Bryce Young. I want to see CJ Stroud. So I'd probably say those guys. Um, I was going to say I, I want to see uh, John Mechie because the guy beat leukemia. That is not enough. The headlines for that is not like big enough. They, that needs to be talked about way more. That's impressive. Briley, I'm with you there. Looking forward to it. Looking forward to seeing Stetson rolling out, throwing some bombs to Puka Nakua. Maybe we'll see what ends up happening, but it should be fun though. It's the first time we've seen Rams football with uniforms, obviously since what January. So I think Rose boom would be a solid football starter. I don't think he'd be great. I don't think he'd move the needle, but I think he'd be solid with what's around it. If he was asked to play, you know, be a big time contributor. That's when you're going to start to see the difference, but is he an NFL football player? Absolutely. N Nolan Oppenheimer is a hundred percent S tier. hundred percent S tier. I totally agree with you. The starters, I think you're going to have for preseason. I think you're going to be looking at Stetson Bennett, Ronnie Rivers, uh, Puka Nakua, Demarcus Robinson, and probably Tyler Johnson or uh, maybe Ben Skronik or Lance McCutcheon. Um, offensive line, I think it's kind of a, a toss-up. You could see a lot of Steve Avila. You could see some Brian Allen, Coleman Shelton. You could see Joe, you know, Joe Nopum or Alec Jackson. Maybe AJ R. Curry starts a left tackle. I just don't think you're going to see Rob Havenstein. There's no point of him playing. You might see Ankrum. Um, off uh, the defensive side, I think you see either Copeland or Ernest Brown starting. Uh, Bobby Brown and Kobe Turner could start as well. Aaron Donald under no circumstances will be starting. Laurel Murchison could start. Deswan Johnson could. Um, outside linebackers, I think everybody is potentially going to start there. Ernest Jones will not start. I think everyone else in the linebacker room does. Corners, I think Durant, Kendrick, and Witherspoon are benched. I think you probably see Rochelle, Tomlinson, Jolly, McCutcheon, Davis, Jones, and Gray. And then the safety room, I think they probably bench Fuller and Johnson. So I think we'll see Jason Taylor, Quentin Lake, Russ Yeast, and so forth. So that's probably what we'll see there. Um, yeah, Blaine went to see Oppenheimer tonight, actually. I'm actually, I am of the belief that Oppenheimer is the best movie that I've seen. Um, is it my favorite? No, that would be No Way Home. But Oppenheimer was incredible. It really was. Merch is going to be really good. People are sleeping on merch big time. Big time. 
No doubt about it. Be sure to hit the like button. We got 95 likes. Our goal is always 100. So if we could get to 100, that'd be splendid. Jake, who would win in a hypothetical matchup, the 1999 St. Louis Rams or the 2021 Los Angeles Rams? I'm going to say the greatest show on turf wins by two touchdowns. Um, And here's why. I think the Rams defense in 2021 was great. I think Matthew Stafford's great. But Stafford in that team, if we're talking about the team that played in the Super Bowl, if they get a full OBJ, you got two weapons, you got, uh, you know, Ben Skoranek, you have um, Blanton played a, a series, I think, so that, that he wouldn't really count. So it would be down to Bryson Hopkins, banged up running back room. I just think that the Rams are just so loaded in the nineties. Uh, you know, the 1999 team that I just, there'd be no way to stop Falk, Bruce Holt, uh, you know, Hakeem Warner offensive line was good. Defense line was underrated. I just, I, I don't think that they would win that. I think, I think the 99 Rams would win by two possessions, whether that's a 10 point game or a 14 point game doesn't really matter. I think they'd win by two possessions. I, I really do. Anyone who played on those championship teams is healthy in the matchup. All right. So I would take the 99 Rams by one possession. If we're getting a healthy, you know, Robert Woods, Jordan Fuller and so forth. Crazy production. That's the thing. Like you could say what you will about the Rams defense. That team is not stopping Marshall Falk, Torrey Holt, Isaac Bruce, Tony Horn, and Hakeem, and Prohl, and Ernie Conwell, and Roland Williams. They're just not doing it. Hell, I mean, James Hodgins, is, oh, he was on that one, right? Or was that Robert Holcomb? I could see them doing a fullback wheel out of the backfield and just stunning the Rams. Yeah, the 99 Rams, arguably the greatest team, arguably. The 85 Bears are up there. The 2007 New England Patriots, who I don't think they won the Super Bowl, but they're still up there. What's up, Exotic? Oh, my God, the no-fly zone uh, Broncos with the crazy ass offense with like Demarius Thomas, rest in peace, Emmanuel Sanders, Eric Decker, Julius Thomas. Remember like didn't Peyton Manning the first night of the year, you get the Broncos and Ravens and Peyton Manning decides to throw like five touchdowns or six touchdowns. And like three of them go to Julius Thomas. And you're like, who the hell is this Julius Thomas? You got school in one day. I know the pain, but it was nine years ago. So I guess I don't really remember it that well. (laughs) Ether seven. That, yeah, that was one of the most fun kickoff games. I didn't care how many touchdowns Peyton threw. I remember just Julius Thomas was unstoppable. Um, I, th- I think there's a chance Watson is going to go down as the worst trade in NFL history, considering the fact that it was pretty obvious you were dealing with some baggage and you still made the trade anyway. I think that's definitely I think we're definitely talking about one of the worst trades in NFL history. What's up, cousin Gabe? How you doing? Does Ramsey contain Bruce? Man, I don't even, I don't know. How would you really play that? Ramsey would probably be on Holt, I would imagine. Bruce would probably have Darius Williams on him. And then Hakeem would probably have David Long Jr. Uh, John Johnson should be starting. 
but he's going to start i think it's just russ east has been in camp john johnson hasn't been fully acclimated so that's why we have it there three likes away from our target goal of 100 we've got 89 people still in here so if you could be sure to hit the uh, the like button if you haven't already also be sure to subscribe if you haven't already i do this type of content all the time so uh the more uh the merrier or there's more where that came from i don't know one of those things butchered that one away from one hundo we love to see it That's the thing. So, I mean, if you put... Yeah, it's just that there's not really a way to play them. I just think the gray show on turf would cook. I've also been in that position, Exotic. I had a year where I had none of my friends in any of my classes, and it was brutal, and it hurt. It sucked. So I know what you feel. <laughs> Definitely know how you feel there. And I'll be honest, I don't have like a cool little story about how I met most of my friends I have today because of that year that I didn't have my friends in the class. I'm going to be honest, I just ended up dealing with it, but I'm, I don't think I'm close to anybody who was in those classes, but that might not be the same for you. Trammell is head and shoulders above McCutcheon, not literally, he way smaller he is a good route runner who gets open. I've kind of been saying that uh, for a little bit. Like, I feel like people are sleeping on Trammel, but I'm like, this guy, he carves out a return role, and, you know, he's as good as gold the rest of the way. So I, I do think there that's something to be said there, you know? So, yeah, I really like Trammel, believe it or not. Um what does that look like you know squad guy i think you could probably keep him on the practice squad so i think that's probably why they're not going to worry about bringing him back onto the roster but you know i'm gonna check something i definitely want to check something here let's go to bot tricks It'd be so much easier if they just told me who subscribed is there a way that I could do that? Chat bot. What on earth? Okay. Um. Yes. There we go. There we go. Now I don't have to worry about it anymore. If I can't read it on the screen, it's okay. Because now if anybody subscribes or anything, we're good. We're good as gold now. Anybody subscribes on YouTube and it will actually say in the comment section. That didn't take long. I can't believe I didn't have that set. If y'all haven't peeped that McVeigh interview on the pivot. So I, I watched it. I really liked it. I had a, a kind of a joke of a tweet. I saw two horror movies on my way back from Buffalo and the pivot podcast and the pivot podcast just cleared. It was so much better. Bones and all first off cannibalism horror is not fun. I, I really didn't enjoy it. 
and Blood and Honey, the Winnie the Pooh horror movie, was just basically a mockery of horror. It's why it's always considered trashy. It's why they, you know, people look down on people who like horror. Uh, it's everything that I hate about horror movies. I don't like CGI Blood. I think it looks terrible. Um, and there, I don't like just there's no plot. It's just like senseless killing. Okay. It's like, I don't know. It's so stupid. Blood and Honey is like maybe the worst horror movie I've seen. Saw 10, on the other hand, as Rams House TV brought up, I'm very much looking forward to. There's actually a plot to that. Tyler Johnson, I heard he's having a good camp. Who is the current horrible owner in the league? Ooh. The Browns owner, uh, Jimmy Haslam. I don't know how people sip this, but oh, for you Dodger fans, I got news for you. Top international free agent pitcher Hyun Suk Jang agrees to $900,000 deal with the Los Angeles Dodgers. Boom. What's up, Rams tube? See, all right, Jerry Jones, I met. I, I've actually talked to twice in person. I like Jerry Jones. I, I would never say anything bad about Jerry Jones. Who greenlit that Winnie the Pooh nonsense? Well, I'll tell you. Okay. At the end of the day, the Winnie the Pooh nonsense is because Winnie the Pooh went into public domain. Now, I actually liked this idea. I like the idea of taking Winnie the Pooh and making it a horror movie, right? Ursa is definitely up there. Um, the problem is it was a money grab and it was terrible. It almost, it was so bad. It felt like they were trying to make a mockery of horror fans. Jerry Jones was cool when I met him. Uh, Witherspoon will definitely start. He's not going to be a backup. He's starting on the outside, no doubt about it. As he should. I think he's the second best corner uh, out after um, Jacoby Durant. Uh, it, it's hard to tell. I mean, I could see Tomlinson forcing his, his way into the starting lineup down the road, but I think right now, I think they're going kind of the, they're giving him some work, but I think he's going to be the four or five going into the season as a rookie. Ursay sent like a whale that was more money than Jonathan Taylor was asking for across the country. I, I don't know. It's weird. The Nun 2 looks interesting. Yeah. We're probably going to have a drought of horror movies because one, uh, the strike. So that's one thing. And two, Halloween just ended. Like, we're not going to get another Halloween movie for years, which is sad. But, I mean, just don't take my word for it. Look at the fact Michael Myers over there. He wants to get back in the game. He's got things to do, people to see. <laughs> you know, an NFL player's mom who plays safety free agent. His name is DeAndre Houston Carson. I remember DeAndre Houston Carson played for the Bears. The Dracula movie. Are you talking about Renfield or are you talking about there's like a different Dracula movie? Because Renfield was like a comedy and I, I don't know. I didn't it didn't I didn't think it looked any good. I know it's out though. What's this movie people keep telling me to watch? Something talk? Talk to me? Is that what it is? It's called Talk to Me? I don't know. One of you guys told me to watch it and then a bunch of people started telling me to watch it. I have to watch it. I have to watch it, but I can't remember the name of it. Oh, no, 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 Alex. Leprechaun does not get off that easy. 
that movie is damn it probably is better than poo blood and honey because blood and honey is just so bad it never should have been made okay it was talk to me okay you're you're gonna go watch the meg too let me know how it how it goes i'm not really a shark movie fan but i i you know i've heard some things about it the only horror movies i enjoy watching is van helsing blade and underworld Uh, Meg, I would say probably action. Jason Statham, I don't think would sign on to a movie that was a true horror movie. I think he just wants to be in an action movie. So, yeah, I would say, uh, I'd say action. Warren McClendon's role is, uh, you know, tackle, can play guard, just develop, you know. They're not going to ask too much of him in his rookie year. It's a good thing. Corey comes in. It's my turn. <laughs> it's 106 likes, baby. Hell yeah. Talk to me is definitely now at the top of my list. I need to see it. Uh, where can I watch it? Is it in theaters? Is it on? Hopefully it's on streaming services. I don't want to go to the theater and see it. Yeah, three right tackles, but I think there's definitely some flexibility for McClendon and, if need be, Bruss to play guard, if need be. Really? Talk to Me was created by YouTubers? Interesting. So like, it's like Skinamarink? I need to see they clone Tyrone. I definitely need to see that. That's also at the top. How do I feel about Skip's new co-host who's better than him in every way? I think it makes for a very interesting dynamic where you have a guy who's just way more intelligent than the other guy who's actually played the game, knows what he's talking about. And then you have this guy who doesn't know. So I don't know. It just... Oh, the last voyage of the Demeter. Yeah, that looks interesting. Wow, Alex, way to tease me. You can see talk to me on <laughs> and there's nothing. What about Stephen A. Smith? I don't dislike him. I just think what he said about Isaiah Connor Falefa was really ignorant. I don't think the guy's ever watched a Yankee game in his life and claims to be a Yankee fan. Is Christian Roseboom legit? I think he's legit. I mean, what is legit, though? Like, I mean, he's a UDFA who has worked his way up the rungs to being the second option behind Ernest Jones. That's pretty legit. Is he going to be an all-pro? No. Uncle Sherm. Jake Hummel. Same thing. UDFA worked his way up the rungs to be in the third option. Not bad. <laughs> Damn it, Alex. <laughs> Are you down to play any Warzone tonight, Alex, over on Kick? I'm going to stream Warzone, I think, and then call it a night. Johnny, I agree with you. That is really insulting. You know what else is insulting, but I don't really care. So last night... What's his face? Um, what the hell was I saying? <laughs> oh, last night, Aaron Boone got tossed from the game. Shocker, I know. Grass is green, water is wet. Aaron Boone got kicked out of a game last night against the White Sox. Laz Diaz is the umpire. Let me, uh, let me bring this up because this is just pitiful. 
Is that the word that I would... I, I think you could use that word pretty freely. This is pitiful. Um... Where is it? Here it is. So Laz Diaz, he got 66% strikes uh, called correctly. So he called 17 of 50 strikes were actually outside of the zone. Laz Diaz, the umpire in that game, favored the White Sox by plus 1.59 runs. His accuracy was minus uh, negative 5.2 relative accuracy below expected. And he got 66% of actual strike calls incorrectly. So Aaron Boone comes out and just starts going off on a tangent. And they're both screaming at each other. This guy is so bad. Do you know how much he makes? Do you know how much Laz Diaz makes as an umpire? Chat, I want you to type in your your comment section right now. How much do you think this umpire makes a year? Oh, I want to see it. Mind you, like, he got 66% of the strikes called incorrectly 66 percent he does not make eight billion uh <laughs> it's under one million he's an umpire so he's not going to make a million but what do you think he makes i'm curious not 450k Okay, he makes between 250000 to 350000 annually. Like, the dude literally got 66% of the called strikes correct. And he is making 300000 annually to be awful. He's not a good umpire. Neither is, I don't have to tell you guys this, but neither is Angel Rodriguez or whatever. I feel like everyone knows who he is. It's just like, uh, Laz Diaz and... Hernandez, thank you. Not Rodriguez. Hernandez. Angel Hernandez, thank you. Angel Hernandez and Lance Diaz are the two worst umpires in the major leagues, but because they are tenured long longtime umpires, they make three hundred thousand dollars a year. Three hundred thousand dollars. That is insane. I just, I don't know. Angel just wants attention. Yeah, I could definitely see that. Could definitely see that. What's the Yankee game look like right now? I haven't even looked. Let's see. Where is it? Oh, the Yankees are up 7 1. Wow. Can't even believe that.
Let's see. Seven to one. I agree with that. Hit up the robo arms now. Now imagine if Hernandez was umpiring the World Series. Ugh, don't give me a headache. Imagine Hernandez and then the next game, you're like, all right, Hernandez isn't, who is it? Laz Diaz. Oh, no. Jake should do an early college football who he thinks will win it all this year, Vid. Maybe. I'd have to do more research on college football, though. I'm going to head to bed, Jake. Have a good night, everyone. Got to fix my sleep schedule. Good luck, Exotic. Appreciate you. I don't know if I'd say Josh Allen is the most disrespect or is anywhere near one of the most disrespected quarterbacks. The guy was on the, uh, the Madden cover. Matthew Stafford, I agree with. I'd probably say Matthew Stafford and who else is a really disrespected quarterback? Not Mahomes. Not Jalen Hurts. Not Dak. Not Daniel Jones. I mean, he's disrespected, but... um, Not Sam Howell. Not Brock Purdy. Kyler, no. Geno, definitely not. Um, Fields, absolutely not. Jordan Love, no. Kirk Cousins, no. Goff... I don't know. I mean, Goff seems like he's been getting some love. Let's say Stafford. Baker. Baker's being a little disrespected. Price Young, no. Derek Carr, I haven't heard anything of. So, I mean, he's getting a little disrespected, I would say. Desmond Ritter. Trevor Lawrence, no. Oh, Lamar Jackson. I'd say the most disrespected quarterbacks, Matthew Stafford, Lamar Jackson, Derek Carr, Desmond Ritter, and Hmm. Let's see, Matthew Stafford, Lamar Jackson, Derek Carr, Desmond Ritter. Um, I mean, I could see Kenny Pickett. I feel like he's been getting some love lately, which is good. He deserves it. Part of me... Hmm. I'm going to say Tua. Stafford, Tua, Carr, Lamar, Desmond Ritter. Those are my five most disrespected quarterbacks in the NFL going into the season. Rodgers is definitely in the discussion as well. Guy won two of the last three years MVPs, and people are like, oh, he's not going to be good. All right, guy, whatever you say. I think Trevor Lawrence gets a lot of respect, so I probably wouldn't say Trevor Lawrence. Seems like everybody's picking Jags. Disrespect is when Matthew Stafford's rated the 22nd best quarterback in Madden. Disrespect is when Matthew Stafford isn't in the top 10 or top 14 of a player ranking, uh, the top 100. Uh, disrespect is when everyone brings up Matthew Stafford's interceptions, but not Dak Prescott's, even though Dak led the league in interceptions last year. Disrespect is when everyone says Desmond Ritter is just a guy, a jag, when we didn't even get a chance to really see him play that much. 
Uh, disrespect is when Derek Carr, who was a good quarterback on the Raiders, gets to go to the Saints, a new you know location, a pretty big move in the season, and no one's talking about it. Disrespect is when a quarterback wins the MVP in 2019 and Lamar Jackson, his second year in the NFL, and he gets shit and is talked about as being just a runner uh, that can't throw. But then in the same token, you have people saying Justin Fields is a top 10 running back. Uh, disrespect is when you have Tua Tagovailoa, who was pretty much first in every advanced metric for a quarterback before he suffered an injury and people just disregard him as just a guy uh disrespect is once again going back to it aaron Rodgers winning two of the last three years mvp and people saying that he's just going to fall off because because uh that's disrespect so yeah darth who do i have winning the world series the braves and i think whoever the braves play they're going to probably sweep uh they are so much better than everyone else it's not even close um their team is just magnificent they got guys every which way i mean from albies and acuna and you know olsen and then you have you know their their pitchers and i don't know if freed is coming back or not but i just think that the braves right now a team ops of over 800 they are the best team and it's not close i think they'll be playing either the orioles or the rangers that's what i think i think it'll be the braves and rangers or the braves and orioles and i think they'll probably sweep whoever they play i think they're just going to run roughshod of the entire nl uh the only team that seems like they got a shot um in the nl would probably be the dodgers if i'm being honest with you um you know i'm not a dodgers fan as you guys know but i'm just being real here i think really the only team that i really look at like oh yeah they might have a shot is the uh la dodgers uh, after that i mean milwaukee doesn't scare me chicago's interesting keep an eye on chicago they're getting hot at the right time they're six of their last 10 they've won six of their last 10 um they got a great run differential of 67 uh, but the Dodgers, it, big thing for me is run differential. If you look at teams with big run differentials, the Braves have 164. So they have scored 164 more runs than they've given up. The Dodgers have scored 119 more, right? The only teams that have those triple digit run differentials, you have plus 172 in the Rangers. They lead the uh, major leagues in run differential. Um, and you have plus 149 in the race. So, wow, the Orioles don't even lead in that. But, yeah, run differential has always been big for me. I've always looked at that. Uh, if you want to see something that's absolutely disgusting and proves they're the worst team in all of baseball, no matter what the records show, the Oakland Athletics have a negative 273 run differential. I don't know how you have been outscored by 273 runs. Um there's still two months to go that's really sad like seriously if you have a, a friend out there that is an oakland athletics fan um or a vegas athletics fan depending on you know how you see it let them know you're thinking of them you're praying for them because i don't know how you could go through that that is uh, that is i mean if you're watching athletics baseball you should be compensated for your pain and suffering because negative 273 runs as a differential is obscene it is obscene that is so bad another thing that's bad is if you're an angels fan the angels have now a worse record than the new york yankees uh in the wild card race and they sold they 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 didn't sell at the deadline they went all out they got they went and got some guys they got Gritchuk. they took the ace from the white Sox, giolito and they're now two and a half behind the yankees who are five games out the angels were right in the thick of things and now things haven't really gone well so Yeah, I'm not an Astros fan either. Uh, the Astros, how they're going to sneak in in the playoffs? Well, right now, they are behind 
they're a a half a game ahead, a game and a half ahead of the who the Blue Jays. Looks like the Blue Jays with three wild cards. Um. Yeah, that that's that's essentially what's happening right now. Is that. You got the Rays, the Astros, and the Jays. The Rays are a little bit behind the Rays. Uh, the, the Astros are a little bit behind the Rays. The The Astros are going to, you know, they'll end up clinching a wild card spot. So that's how they'll get in. I cannot believe how bad the Cardinals are. That shocks me. We could talk about how bad the Yankees are, except they're at least three games above 500, soon to be four, because they're going to win this game. Um... But that absolutely shocks me that the St. Louis Cardinals are as bad as they are. Who had Shohei was crying? That's depressing. They should have traded him. They should have traded Shohei. Jake, how do I feel about the whole uh, running back controversy in the NFL right now? Um, I mean, I think there's there's definitely an issue, but it, you know we can't sit here and say that it's like to just pay running backs. Like, there's a reason why it's harder to pay running backs. They don't last as long. There's been a string of injuries, so it's it's tough right now. It's definitely tough. Appreciate you. Come on, Botrix, hit me with that. Cause I totally didn't see that. Who who just subscribed? <laughs> Are you really not gonna I just programmed you to do that? What the hell? What the hell, Botrix? You being lame right now? Bruh. Alright. Well appreciate you subscribing. I'm sorry I didn't get to see who that was. Let's see. <laughs> Bruh. Oh, that's not good. You definitely don't want to see that. Hopefully Acuna's okay. Man, that guy is absolutely the NL MVP. I think Witherspoon could. I think he's a stud. But yeah, guys, uh, we're going to pivot over to kick. I'm going to play some Warzone if you guys care to join. But yeah, be sure to go and follow me over there. I think either tomorrow or Thursday. I think we're going to do a film breakdown. I don't know of who, but appreciate you guys as always. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Be sure to click on that link head on over to uh kick.com and hit me with a follow i'm gonna resume my stream in a little bit and uh and yeah appreciate you guys i'll be back tomorrow in some capacity on youtube uh but the stream will continue over on kick so if you guys have any questions that you didn't get answered you can ask them over on our kick stream. I'm just going to be playing some war zone and we'll see what happens. But hopefully Alex, you're listening double X Alex. Uh, we can run some duos. I don't think we'll have Gary tonight, but if anyone wants to play some war zone, let me know, uh, head on over to kick and yeah, we'll set something up. But again, appreciate you guys so much for your support. It's been incredible this week. We just started the week and we're freaking killing it. We're getting closer and closer to 7 million views in our channel's history. And uh, we're getting closer to that 19K uh, subscribers. We're now under the 300 subscriber mark to hit 19,000. So really appreciate you guys supporting. Uh, my game tag. What is my game tag? I got to find that out. Um I think it's just JK Bogan. So 
Yeah. I think it's just J.K. Bogan. It should be J.K. Bogan. So, anyway, go check that out. Go give me a follow over there. Would really appreciate it. And uh, I'll see you guys soon. Later, folks. Do you need some energy to get through the day without relying on coffee? I got just the thing for you. It's called Neuro, and I'm partnering up with them for today's video. Neuro has gum and mints to energize, calm, and focus when you need it. They were developed by former athletes who were training at the highest level and simply didn't want to take any mysterious supplements or energy drinks when studying, training, or even going out. Instead of something sugary and ineffective, they wanted to create clean and balanced energy that could be taken anytime and anywhere. Their energy and focus formula is specially formulated with natural caffeine, theanine, and B vitamins to sustain the mental endurance necessary to maintain your focus. Their calm and clarity formula is expertly developed with GABA, vitamin D3, and L-theanine to optimize composure and clarity of mind. Their health and vitality formula is specially specially infused with life-enhancing immune-boosting vitamins to help strengthen and support your body. What makes Neuro different? Neuro's gone through dozens of formulations, process, and tests to ensure that each gum and mint they make delivers on their promise of getting you in the right state at the right time. Unlike other heat-extruded gum and mints, Neuro's products are created using cold compression technology, which maintains each ingredient's bioavailability. Neuro is a clean boost of energy without the jitters of coffee or an energy drink. With so many challenges and demands, it can be really hard to stay focused, and Neuro does a great job of keeping you calm, cool, and collected. Stress, fatigue, lack of focus can all impact decision-making abilities. Recently, I had been feeling sluggish and have been distracted with everything going on in my life. These Neuro Mints, however, have allowed me to stay on task and have stayed calm, cool, collected, as well as alert, and I've been able to change my approach and focus on the task at hand. Go to my sponsor link now down below, tryneurogum.com slash JKB to enjoy energy, calm, and focus whenever you need it.